Hello from Gardening at Duenza here in Ireland and you're very welcome to this video all about my top 10 garden trees for 2020. We're going to learn today about 10 spectacular trees. Some are evergreen, some are flowering, some are for autumn interest with peeling bark or some are for tropical interest but all are for small gardens. We're going to learn how to care for them and why I grow them here at Duenza and why they've made my top 10 for this year. So whether you're starting out with a new garden or whether you're thinking of adding some additional interest to an existing garden, then this is the video for you. You're very welcome to this video all about trees and I can't wait to share the top 10 that I have with you. Now we're all aware of the need to reduce carbon emissions and planting trees is cited as a wonderful way to do that, which indeed it is. However, what we also need to consider is that trees only start to earn their keep in terms of locking in carbon dioxide after 20 to 30 years. So not only do we need to plant trees, but we need to choose them wisely and take care of them. Because if a tree dies and rots, then the good is undone and the carbon dioxide is released from the trunks and the branches where it's locked in and back into the atmosphere. So yes, plant trees, but choose them wisely, choose them well. Choose trees that you love, ones that are suited to your space, ones with continuing interest to, through the seasons and ones that you'll be happy to grow old with. I've got more than 140 trees here in the garden at Duenza, the oldest of which are coming on to 20 years now and the youngest of which were two paulonia trees which I planted about four years ago. So let's see which of these 140 plus trees made my top 10 for 2020. Let's get on with the video. Okay, so let's start off with an absolute showstopper of a tree. This tree has the common name of Golden Rain and it comes from Southern Europe, mountainous regions from France to the Balkans. It's the laburnum tree and it's in the pea family, which we can see from the shape of its pendulous flowers. So from May, it produces racemes of pendulous flowers on bare stems and they are absolutely an amazing vision which light up the whole garden. And this display continues from about two to three weeks. Now, it's such a magnificent display that my son, who's absolutely not interested in gardening at all, counts this tree as his favourite plant in the garden. So if he notices it, it really is worth noticing. And I've had this tree for about 19 years. So when you get a new garden, you look out for the nice things you want to buy. And I had my eye out for this particular laburnum very funny story of how I bought a large specimen and brought it home in the car with its branches or I guess the trunk sticking out the back window on the motorway but I got it home and it's gone on to do amazing things in the garden. In terms of care the laburnum is very easy to grow. It should be grown in full sun but will tolerate most soil types only waterlogged soil it won't put up with. In terms of pruning Minimal pruning required. So all you need to do is from say late winter to early spring to remove any dead branches or perhaps the odd branch that's crossing over. And this is known as pruning group one. It's hardy, very hardy to US hardiness zone H6 and generally trouble free. Now, the laburnum is considered a small tree, so eminently suitable to small gardens. And what this means is that in 20 to 50 years, it will attain a maximum height of 13 to 26 feet. That's a small tree. 
Now, if you've seen my photographs, you no doubt will be saying that you really want one of these in your garden. And it is a magnificent showstopper, but it has only one season of interest. And the general advice is that if you have a small garden, you should choose a tree that has a minimum of two seasons of interest. It is true that the laburnum tree is absolutely magnificent when it's in flower, but you have to consider that after it finishes flowering, you're not even going to notice it properly in your garden. And then in winter, of course, it loses its leaves because it's deciduous and you just have bare branches. Also the tree, it can flower magnificently one year and then the following year for no apparent reason, just have a much less of a flowering and this is quite normal. But this is a tree that you're going to enjoy waiting for and watching for and anticipating. And in spring this year I had a visit from the RTE television network which is the Irish local television network. They were interviewing me and the garden for a program called Nationwide and the day before they were due to arrive, the laburnum was on the absolute cusp of flowering. And of course I was praying that it would hurry up and flower for when the cameraman came around. But of course it doesn't. Trees and plants seldom go along with what we need of them. They have their own agenda. Anyway, it's an absolute beautiful tree, which I'm very happy to count in my top 10 trees for 2020. The next tree in my top 10 is the Japanese maple, which I absolutely love for its gorgeous filigree leaves, often in shades of green, but mine are purple. And it makes a beautiful weeping small tree if protected from harsh winds. I love this tree so much so that I have six of them in my garden. The oldest is about 20 years. It came from our previous address in a pot and the youngest are a lot less than that. They're slow growing trees but an absolutely wonderful backdrop to all of the summer's proceedings. So this is a tree that needs to be grown in semi-shade in moist but well-drained soil and it needs to be protected from harsh winds. If you have a very exposed windy garden then this is not the tree for you. It falls into pruning group one which you'd better get used to because a lot of the trees I'm going to mention today fall into that category which means they need very very little pruning. Remove disease branches or crossed over branches or the odd branch that isn't to your liking in winter to early spring. And it's very hardy. It's hardy to US hardiness zone H6, which is good news. Now, this Acer is definitely a small tree, smaller than the previous one we mentioned. And after 10 years, you can expect about five to eight feet in height from this slow growing tree. And it provides three seasons of interest because if you consider from the moment that this tree starts pushing out leaves to when it eventually drops them in November, that's about eight months. Then you've got three seasons of interest where this wonderful tree acts as a backdrop, as the perfect foil for the rest of your plants and garden proceedings. Our next tree is the paper bark tree from China and I love this tree for its striking coppery red bark which really shines out in duller times of year. The smooth bark is a brownish red with prominent horizontal lenticels. And I have two of these trees in the garden, which I've planted quite near to the house so that I can enjoy them during the darker winter months. They're two of the old ladies of my garden. This is a tree for full sun, unfussy about soil type, pruning group one yet again, and hardiness H6. It can attain a height of 26 feet plus after the 20 to 50 year mark. But it is a good tree for a small garden, having, I suppose, four seasons of interest. So any tree that is grown for its bark, for the attractiveness of its bark, is there all of the year and therefore has four seasons of interest. Definitely one to look out for. So Prunus cerula, the paper bark tree, makes my top 10 for its wonderful bark that shines out in the garden, even in deadly winter. 
And next up is the Chusan palm or Trachycarpus fortunae, which is the only palm tree which makes it into this video. It originates in China, Japan, Myanmar and India. And this evergreen tree lends a subtropical feel to areas in the garden in summer and soldiers on in through winter. Now, because it's evergreen, it offers backdrop to outdoor winter potting videos. And I'm sure you've seen it in many of mine. I have four of these trees in the garden, indicating how much I like it. And they range in age from 10 to 11 years. Trachycarpus fortunae is the hardiest large trunk forming palm known. And not only does it tolerate the cold winters, but it tolerates cool, moist summers, which is very important for anybody growing or trying to grow plants in my part of the world. So Trachycarpus fortunae needs full sun and a well-drained soil. And in terms of pruning, very little needed, just remove unsightly leaves and flower spikes as they go over. It's hardy down to H7, US hardiness zone, and really just needs a little bit of protection from cold winds, so not one for an exposed garden. It can grow tall eventually, but is considered suitable for a small garden. And when you consider that with this evergreen palm, you actually have four seasons of interest because it never loses its leaves and therefore you have this subtropical element to your garden every day of the year. Three of the four trees that I have in the garden were actually bought as small seedlings and planted out as small seedlings and one was bought as a more mature and more expensive specimen. But over time, over the course of the 11 years, they are actually all the same height as each other, which is very rewarding to see. So now we've covered four of the 10 garden trees that I'm going to cover in this video. And I just thought I'd take two brief minutes to tell you about memberships. Memberships is a great way to get more from my channel. If you join up as a member, what you will get for your four euros 99 a month is extra specialized videos and live streams that are just open to you. In addition, there's free stuff such as garden seeds. So if you're considering memberships, hit the join button and there you'll see what exactly you would get if you signed up. And hopefully I can welcome you on the other side. Okay, let's get on with the video. And the next tree in our top 10 of garden trees is Magnolia Star Wars, which is an absolute beauty that I sought out after seeing it in another garden and being completely enamored by the size of its enormous rosy pink flowers. Now these things were absolutely enormous. The size of my daughter's face, 11 inches for a single flower and in profusion. So it took me a while to track this down, but you can bet I got my hands on it in the end. This tree flowers profusely in spring, in April, and then after that, with a smattering of flowers right through the season. It flowers on bare branches, and the flowers, I guess the display lasts about four weeks, but when it's there, it's really wow. So this tree should be grown in full sun or part shade, in moist, slightly acidic soil in a sheltered spot. And in terms of pruning, prune it in summer when fully in leaf as with all magnolias. It's hardy to H7, US standard, and makes a worthy specimen in anyone's garden. Now, Magnolia Star Wars is considered a small tree growing to about 13 foot after 20 years, but you have to consider that it will also be as wide. So if you look at my specimen, it's nine years in the ground and just because of the extra width of it, it certainly gives the impression of being a bigger tree than the dimensions might suggest. So in theory, it only has one season of interest with the profuse flowering in April. However, if you consider that there will be a succession, a smattering of flowers going through to the end of the year, then it's a little bit more than just that. 
So Magnolia Star Wars certainly earns its keep as one of my top 10. It's the tree I planted for my daughter Oriana. It's her birth tree, although planted not on her birth a bit later on. And it's one I look out for in early spring and really look forward to those amazing flowers. The next tree in my top 10 is the wedding cake tree and it's one of my absolute favorites. It's a graceful and spectacular small tree with layered horizontal branches of fresh green leaves with cream margins. It produces cream flowers and then blackberries in autumn and it's one of the most stunning variegated trees. The wedding cake tree can be grown in full sun or partial shade in acidic, moist, well-drained soil. It takes pruning group one, so that's minimal pruning, and it's for hardiness zone, down to hardiness zone H7, so a very hardy tree. Now, this is a tree for a small garden. It'll attain 13 foot in about 20 years, and it has a long season of interest. So from the moment that the buds come out on the branches to when it eventually drops its leaves, you've got plenty to look at and plenty to admire. And it's the kind of tree that is perhaps a must have, one that many gardeners will look out for. You have to think as well that this is also my third tree. So the first two succumbed to lawnmower accidents, let's just say, which is always a drawback of planting a specimen tree because it doesn't have the protection of the border that it's in. But this third one has done well. But Cornus controversa variegata certainly was worth the trouble and I'm very happy to have it in my garden and to count it in my top 10 trees of 2020. The next tree in my top 10 of garden trees is Acer grissium or the paper bark maple. It comes from China, central China, and I love it because it's the king of peeling bark trees. Its chestnut brown bark constantly peels into tight curls, revealing cinnamon red wood beneath, and this peeling is on both trunk and branches. Some specimens produce autumn foliage in shades of red and orange. Grow this tree in full sun or partial shade in any moist, well-drained soil. Pruning group one, so dead easy, and hardiness H7. Acer grissium is definitely a tree for a small garden, attaining perhaps 26 feet after 20 years. And because it's peeling bark and it's bought for the peeling bark, it provides four seasons of interest, so year-round interest. Just a little tip, a word of advice, never buy this tree without seeing the specimen firsthand yourself because the peeling bark can fail to develop in certain specimens. And anyway, this is probably good advice for choosing any tree. Always have a look at it yourself. Choose your trees yourself and look out for a good framework of branches because if you're not very confident about initial pruning of trees then that framework that you see is going to be what the tree has for a long time. So I have two Acer Grissium in my garden, a wonderful tree that I'm very happy to count in my top 10 because of its amazing, amazing peeling bark. The next tree in my top 10 is Tetrapanix Rex. T-Rex, it's definitely a dinosaur, and this is wonderful for a tropical look. It has enormous palmate leaves with woolly underside and definitely gives a subtropical feel to any garden. I love this tree and have several grows of it in my garden. So it needs full sun or partial shade and well-drained soil and it's in pruning group one. Now in terms of hardiness, it's classified as H8 US. So less hardy than some of the others we've looked at and its height it will attain 8 to 13 feet after two to five years so very fast growing and it provides tropical or subtropical interest for at least two seasons for as long as those enormous leaves are present. Now in my garden this tree loses its leaves in winter but the trunk persists. If you have a colder climate, what you may find is that it's raised to the ground by winter, but it should pop up again in the spring. 
but do please note that this tree does sucker. So you will find seedlings popping up several feet further away from the parent plant. However, these seedlings are very easy to pull out and get rid of. So I guess what I'm saying here is that it depends how you garden. If you have a more lazy fair attitude to your garden and to letting things just grow as they want, then this is not the tree for you. However, if you manage things more assiduously, then this is a wonderful addition to anybody's garden. It brings a glorious subtropical feel and definitely one of my top 10 plants. The next tree in my top 10 is a cherry blossom called Shugetsu. And I absolutely love this tree for its masses of white double flowers from spring onwards. They start out with pink buds and then open to form this magnificent display. And then the whole thing is finished off by a carpet of petals in confetti form down below the tree as the season goes on. An absolute showstopper, but as if that wasn't enough. In autumn, the leaves of the tree acquire autumny tinges, oranges and reds, and they make a, an unexpected and pretty backstop to the border and to the rest of the garden. So grow this cherry blossom in full sun in any moist, well-drained soil. In terms of pruning, prune only in June to avoid any chance of infection, as with all cherry blossom trees. And it's hardy to H6. So this is a small tree. It'll grow to about 13 feet after 20 years, but consider that it will also be about that same width. Um, Perhaps not something for a border, more a specimen tree, but it's one I absolutely love and I am really happy to count it in my top 10 garden trees for 2020. The final tree in my top 10 of garden trees is the Himalayan birch and this is one that I have 12 off. I have an avenue of these along my drive. Now this is a tree that's chiefly grown for its white glowing bark which really stands out in spring and winter when there's not a lot else going on in the garden. But when the tree starts to leaf up in May there's something about those leaves that just add a whole sense of gaiety to the garden and I absolutely love it for this. So this tree, why do I have so many of them? It was one of the first acquisitions for my garden. I think I saw a picture in a book of a, an avenue of birch trees and decided this is what I needed, but I couldn't afford it. And for my birthday that year, my mother bought me six trees for one side of the drive. And then the following year for my birthday, she bought me the other six. So I will always remember her when I see that drive. And although she's dead a while now and I have another tree planted in my garden for her, it's always the birch drive that reminds me of those years and very much of her. So grow this tree in full sun or par shade in well-drained moist soil, pruning group one and hardiness H6. And just a little note, do be aware that birches are quite shallow rooting. So if you have an exposed garden as I did in the beginning, it's perhaps not the best choice because if any big winds come, they'll take the trees down. And a couple of the birch on my drive had to be lifted up when they were really quite big and restaked and hopefully settled in after that. So just bear that in mind. And for the assiduous out there, with a white bark like this, it's very prone to getting dirty. If you have the inclination, what you can do is take a soft cloth and some soap and go out there and wash that bark in, well, any time of year really. It's the best way to make sure that it really is white and that you really do have that for which the tree was bought. So another tree for a small garden should attain 12 metres after the 20 year mark. But with, I suppose, four seasons of interest, when the tree is not in leaf, it's very bare. And because I have them on my drive, I really notice it. But when it leaves up, it's joyous. And I do have that bark for the four seasons. So I guess I can't really complain. Yeah, a very nice tree and one worth having.
And that brings me to the end of this video on my top 10 garden trees for 2020. Which one was your favourite, I wonder? Please jot the information down below because I'd be very interested to see. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you might consider joining up to membership, which I mentioned about halfway through the video. And if so, hit the join button and you'll see what you would get if you were to sign up. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching and I will see you on the next video. Bye.